All right, hello everyone. This is Bill. Today I'm gonna to show you my workflow when I do a plan drawing or elevation drawing in Revit. And these are tips and tricks I like to use when I do a plan and elevation drawing in Revit. Um, nowadays, I do a lot of post uh, drawing in Photoshop um, based on Rhino model, especially for diagrammatic drawing. But if you work with Revit and then you prefer to work at Revit in a firm, and if your firm only work with Revit, uh, these are tips I like to use when I make drawings uh, in Revit. Uh, I hope you find this helpful. I know some of you are, may not already know this, uh, these tips, but for those of you who don't know, I hope this will be helpful for you in the future practice. So now I'm going to use the sample architecture project file, the legendary file. Yep, open it up. And then we can gonna go to level one. And now what I like to do is I like to clean up my table or clean up my drawing where before I do anything else. So at first I'm gonna get rid of the color because I'm aiming for a very black and white co uh, color line weights drawing. Uh, so I'm not looking for these colorful uh, programming um, drawings. So I'm gonna go to the color scheme in the property bar uh, window, sorry, uh, click on name. And then I will click on none, apply, that's okay. And now I would like to clean up all the symbols that I don't need, especially this question mark uh, for information, all these um, uh, symbols over here. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna click on it, right? And I'm gonna right click, um, I'm gonna hide in view, and then you can hide in category. So what I like about hide in category is that all the elements that have in the same category, um, like walls, um, or section symbols, those are in the same category and Revit will understand that. So when you hide category, all of the similar uh, elements will be hide as well. And I'm gonna hide this section line. Oops. Hide in view, category. Right, very good. Then I also hide this thing. Oh, my bad. That's not what I want. I do category. And then I'm gonna click on this thing, so hide it as well. Sometimes cleaning up drawing takes time, so be patient with me. Very nice. Cool, all right, now I have a cleaner drawing, which I would love to work um, on. So now I'm gonna edit the grid first. Um, I like, um, to me, like the black grid, like this is fine, but sometimes when you do poche or something, having like a very dark black grid coming through uh, could be annoying or it's hard, especially when you print it uh, on like um, big construction documents. Sometimes it's really hard to um, know where is uh, the wall detail and which one is the line from the grid. So what, what I like to do is I like to create hierarchy when I do the grid drawing. So I like the black coming outside the plan, but when it's reach center to the plan, it's kind of becoming like um, a lighter gray um, so that I can have my drawing popped out more with the poche later. So I'm gonna click on it, edit type, so the cool thing about Revit is that when you edit one type uh, for this grid, uh, all of them will be edited as well. Center segment, right? I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna click custom. And I wanna choose a center segment color. I wanna change the color of that. And the color I would love to go through is 196. So I'm gonna have 196 for all red, green, and blue. That's okay. When I click apply, you will see the difference as in you see how it's coming in with a uh, lighter tone of gray. That's what I like to work with. And now I'm gonna change um, the, um, the wall, uh, make it uh, poche and make it sexier in my view. So click on it, right click, and then override graphic in view, like category again. And I like to touch on the cut lines and the cut patterns. I don't wanna care about the surface pattern and surface transparency uh, yet. I will show you uh, some tricks with that in the elevation later. So with the cut lines, I would like to go to the weights. I would like to put the line weight at five. This is what I like to work with. You can change it as you see fit for you, or depending on how you want your drawing to look. And I would leave everything as it is. Actually, I may change the color to 
well, no, I would leave it as it is. And then I would like to work with the foreground color over here. First, I'm gonna change the pattern into solid fill, right? In the Western um, architecture firm would we'll use solid crochet, but in Asia, we like to use hatch and the hatch I go for a, um, that, that when I do work in Vietnam is the stack or hatch over here. But yeah, so for the second tutorial today, I'm gonna do uh, solid fill. And I like my color to be uh, gray as well. So I'm gonna do 145 as my gray. That's okay, apply to everything. Yep, looks great. Okay. Yep, and this is my aesthetic, my what I like to look in my plan. Um, you don't have to do follow what I uh, exactly my aesthetic, but I hope that with the um, how 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 you can uh, showing you how to adjust the elements uh, with a few clicks uh, can help you uh, choose your own aesthetic and your own workflow as well. All right, very cool. And then what I like to do here is to put the, these furniture um, into a, a lighter tone. And one cool thing about Revit, excuse me, is that you can click on, oh, sorry, select your um, furniture. What you can do is you can right click, over gray, uh, override graphic in view by category again. And then what I like to do is I like to click on half tone so that you can tone half of the shade of black down and it's really cool and it's created like a very nice hierarchy for your drawing. Apply. Okay. See that? See the hierarchy? Yeah. Very nice. Give me one sec. Uh, I'm gonna select that category. That tone. There we go. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. So now your furniture has set back. So it's pop out your drawing a little bit more, which is what I like. I do the same thing. Sorry. Yep, that's all. This is a very rough workflow. Uh, you can come back and you know uh, polishing your drawing later, but it's just a demonstration for you to how to do it. Cool. Yeah. So now everything's set back uh, into half tone, and that's what I would like to do. Let me check this one real quick. Should be half tone. Oh. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Um, so this, uh, this is pretty much it for plan. Uh, it's really quick. Um, you don't have to spend much time on it. And then what you can do later on, if you want, you can just get rid of these uh, thing. If you don't like it, um, you can hide it, right? To make your plan cleaner look. Yeah. Yeah, to give a cleaner look to your plan. And then what, what I like to do later on is to add shadows. And we we'll see a lot of example of uh, peers in the class using shadows uh, to create a 3D aspect of their drawing. So I'm going to go to the sim pad. Sim, oh, actually, sim city. Um, I do sim pad on. Yep, shadow. Yeah, and I'm going to create a shadow. And then what I like to do is I like to do go to graphic displays. And I like to play around with the shadows, right? And I like to do lighting. I don't want to mess with this. And I like to put my shadow, uh, have a very lighter look to it. Maybe ambient lights go down a little bit. Shadow go down a little bit more. Yep. Depending on how you perceive the aesthetic, it could be different. But yeah, here is uh, like the basic. So another thing I like to show you is to show you how to do uh, join in elevation. Go to the rest view. 
Yep. So here is the Westview elevation. Uh, and again, I like, like a, uh, like I kind of like the same workflow I do with a plan. I like to clean up my table before I do any type of drawing. So I will hide all these uh, grid over here. Sorry, you don't have to select everything. It's just a habit that I have in Rhino. I just have to select everything. Like category, and then, sorry about that. And view category, yep. Same thing, we'll click one, right click, and then hide in view category. There we go. Very nice. Yep. Now I have to clean up my drawing. And now I want the sky to move up a little bit uh, compared to uh, what the, the crop is here. So what I would do is that I would go to uh, click on the light bulb over here, review hidden elements, click on it. And then it's going to give me a window like that, right? I'm going to click on it. And then uh, this is the frame view that they crop for me. So now I'm going to change the crop by moving up the notes, right? I'm gonna bring out all the trees. There we go, there we go. I like to do the sky to be half or maybe two thirds of a drawing to create that hierarchy, right? Uh, to make your drawing stronger because you're building really grounded uh, to the ground. Especially if you add poche, it will look very strong later. And then I'm gonna turn off the light bulb. Yep. So now, uh, well, actually, uh, one thing uh, that Nick probably uh, teach you in 2.30 is that try not to cut the tree because it looks really weird when you cut the tree, especially if you cut it like really close to like the end of the tree. So what I like to do here, I just like to hide it. Not necessarily, oh, well, my bad. Not necessarily delete it, but like I just like to hide it. And then I like to extend this one out a bit more. So I'm going to go back to the light bulb, click on that. And I like to extend the notes out. Yep, I like to see the path uh, where, and then it's come to the house. Yep. Or oh, some of you really like to center the drawing. So you may like uh, increasing uh, the size of this one to the left a little bit more. But for me, I like to see the cut of the ground. So this is what I like to do. I click on it. Yep, so no trees are cut, basically. So now um, I like what I like to do is I like to uh, go to the graphic display. And let's see, I like to uh, Oh, silhouettes. I like to do the white line for the silhouettes. That's just my thing. Bye. Yeah, very cool. Okay. So uh, now you see these uh, windmill over here, um, or the wind turbine. Um, I liked because they are far away, but like they look too strong for me now. So what I like to do is I like to click on them, right click, override graphic in view, again, same thing, by category. I like to put them half tone, right, apply. So now they kind of push back a little bit. And then I, I can also like do a mess with the transparency. As I increase the transparency, the more I increase it, the more transparent they become. So I like to put it at 25 so that they push back a little bit more. Apply, maybe, yep. that's okay, yep. So now they very push back and to the building, right? Because we want the building to be the main elements, not these wind turbine. And then I like to play around with uh, the, um, let's see, graphic display again. And then we can do shadows, or we can want to cast shadows. Let's see how it looks. Okay, nothing happened. Show ambient shadows. Okay, very cool. And then I can uh, create like depth of queuing, uh, which which means that your shadow will change depending on like the depths um, of the space, right? So that mean the closer the, the closer the objects to you, the darker the shadow should be, and then the further away from you, um, the lighter the shadow should be. So show depth, and I'm gonna create increasing the gap between near and far, like that. Very cool. Okay, grab it, display. Let me do it again. Yep. And then I'm going to fade. Bye. There we go. Creating a little bit of fade. There we go. Okay. Then lighting. I want to keep the lighting. Shadow. I may make the shadow to be stronger. Maybe ambient lights to see if it's adding. Ooh, yes, I think I forgot the sun. I think the sun will make a big difference over here. Uh, sun setting. 
I like to go to top to right. Apply. There we go. Yeah. So make sure you apply the sun so that like the accurate sun shading or sorry sunlight and sh and the shadows will be casted onto the object. And then now I'm gonna go to the graphic displays and then I'm gonna go to depth of queuing. Sorry, I'm gonna go to lighting. I'm gonna decrease my shadow because my shadows are very strong right now. Yep, there we go. Depending on how you see it, this is very quick, but then I'll just show you the workflow. Uh, photo exposure, I don't want to touch that. Uh, it's nothing to do. Very cool. All right. Yeah. So, like with shadow, we can create more depth uh, into the drawing. Uh, another thing I like to do is I like to do uh, to fix these trees here. Like these trees, like they look okay, right? They look very tacky in the sense. So, I like to click on them right click, override graphic in view by category again. And then what I like to do, I like to mess with, with the transparency, right? Uh, or maybe I can put them half tone first, and then I will do the transparency, make them ghosty a little bit. Yeah, there you go. So that like they not become the focus of your drawing. And press okay. But yeah, that's like a quick um, to show you, a uh, quick way to show you how to uh, do an elevation. Very cool. All right, so this is kind of like a bonus um, thing I would like to show you. Um, so what you're gonna learn in the future is that you're gonna learn how to convert from Rhino to Revit with the conveyor plugin. So, but now I'm gonna show you how do you convert from Revit to Rhino uh, with a different plugin. Um, so the thing about, uh, the nice thing about being able to convert from Revit to uh, Rhino is that uh, after finishing the construction documents from Revit, I can always uh, go back and do like um, diagram drawings uh, for clients uh, to show clients uh, from uh, Rhino. But then instead of like converting back in the old, back, back in the good old day that you have to save your file into OBJ um, or the form of um, file, um, and then to open that in Rhino, sometimes your geometry doesn't read, and sometimes you get you lost your inf you lose your information. But with this component, um, uh, which is integrated with Grasshopper and uh, Rhino Seven, you are able to develop with uh, uh, more accurate, and you can get all the accurate information from your geometry into Rhino. So what I did is that I use a plugin called Rhino Insider. Uh, uh, which is um, um, these amazing people have developed um, a components, uh, a Rhino components in Revit uh, that you can um, grabbing the Revit geometry into Rhino and also integrated that with Grasshopper. Um, so if you you know you like to use Grasshopper, um, it's it's gonna be an easy thing. Um, and then I can show you how you to how you can do that in Grasshopper. Very simple, like super simple. Just like one or two click, and then you will will be able to grab your Revit model into your Rhino. And then you can download the Rhino Revit uh, inside Revit beta over here. Uh, the, the plugin is still working process, which has been working very well for me. And then you can download Rhino 7. They give you evaluation um, version for 90 days for you to try it out. Um, trying it out is really fun. All right. So um, what I want to do right now is that after install everything, you're going to have the Rhino, uh, Rhino symbol on your ads in. You just click on that. It's going to lead you to the Rhino service tab, which you can use Python, don't worry about it, or you can do Rhino Grasshopper. So what I'm going to do is click on Rhino. It's going to open up Rhino for me. Very nice. And then I'm going to use this to open Grasshopper as well. Okay, very cool. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a host, which is a component uh, for Revit um, in, um, in uh, Grasshopper. Oh, another thing is that if you click on the Revit tab over here, you're going to have a lot of components over here. You're going to be overwhelmed by it. Um, don't worry about it. I'm not going to go into detail, everything. I'm just going to go easy on these um, component hosts over here to show you the magic of this component. So now I have that. I'm going to make a bunch of them. Control, control C, control V, control C, control V again. Make six of them. All right, very cool. Probably not gonna use all of them. So what I'm gonna do right now is that I'm gonna right click on this component, the host component. I'm gonna set one host. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set um, the wall over here and 
now when I check back with my Rhino, you'll be surprised. Wow, crap. Too many software. All right, if you zoom in over here, that is the wall component that you just grab using the host. Oh, sorry, that is the wall from Revit file that you just grab from the host components. Pretty cool, huh? And now if I open back up Grasshopper. So as you can see here, I'm gonna create a window for you to see. There we go. So yeah, so that is, uh, so if you click on it, that is that, right? And do you can do the same thing for all the components like roof, like the wall, and et cetera, right? Um, so, but the thing is now, this thing is still Revit information because let's say if I bake it, right? If I bake it, uh, bake, right? And if I hide this one, if I click on it, you will see the type is not one. It, 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 like it doesn't show usual uh, Rhino uh, phi type, right? It's not like one poly, one closed poly surface or like one open poly surface, right? Because let's say if I draw like a box here, yeah, but click on it, it's like closed extrusion, right? Or like closed poly surfaces or whatever. If I explode it, it'll be like, you know, a surface, right? Yeah, but like this one is like Revit wall basic, SIP, whatever. Right. So what do you have to do now is that you have to get a banana components to convert this one into actual Rhino geometry. Right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the elements tab. I'm going to click on the arrow over here. I'm going to click on the element parts geometry. Click on that. And then boom, element geometries. And I'm going to connect this with that. Right. And now I'm going to delete what I bake. So now the, the wall has been converted. If I click, right click, and if I click bake, yes, please. And if I click on it, boom, six closed poly surfaces. This is exactly what we want. It even show us that it's group as well, which is amazing, right? So what, when I drag it out, I'm gonna hide all of these, right? When I go to shade mode, sorry. And then, yeah, now it's group, right? If I ungroup it, it's the fun, cool thing about it is it show you like the detail of the wall. Like if your wall have like HVAC or whatever, it will show that layer as well, which is really cool. Boom, close solid poly, uh, close poly surface, right? It's very nice, right? Very detailed, very cool. All right, I'm gonna delete it. Right, bring it back up again. Boom. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna try to get another host, right? Let's see if I try I can get a roof. Boom, that's my roof, right? Let's see if I can do this. Right, very cool. Right, and then I'm gonna try to get like a different thing. Let's get one host. I'm gonna try and get this wall over here, right? I'm gonna do the same thing, elements, right? Boom, delete that. Sorry. Okay. Yep. So I'm gonna bake that. Did I bake that? I did not. Okay. Bake. Yes, please. Yep. And that's another wall that we have, right? That's that wooden uh, wall over there that we have. Yeah. The really cool thing about this is that you can get as much as geometry as you want from the Revit model. Let's see if I want to get that. Right. I can get that walkway. So let's see if I can get the belly. Host. Uh, let's see. Nope, I don't think I can get a railing, which is which is fine because there will be um, different type of uh, script that you can use to get like railing and such. Let's see what else can I get? Like this one. There we go. Yeah. See, you can get like simple geometry like that. All right. This is a really cool way for us to be able to grab the elements from the Revit file into Rhino. All you can do is make it. Hi, all these. 
Yeah, see, you have, I bake all my wall components and I have these. All uh, you can do is that you can bake, if you want a roof, you can just bake the roof and then you will get that component as well. Very cool, right? And then now you can start doing your axonometric or using your, or doing, using Rhino um, to make 2D or do your diagram. Yeah, that's pretty much it. If you find it interested, uh, let me know. Um, and I will um, send you the link uh, for you, you know, to learn or download, or download the software. Um, but um, the thing is, this thing is still in beta, so a lot of uh, um, things still um, need uh, improvement. But so far, it's been working pretty well for me. Um, so if you're interested in it, it's definitely something that's uh, worth looking into. Uh, the good things about Conveyor is that um, if you learn Conveyor, if you learn transferring from Rhino to Rabbit now, uh, uh, actually Proving Ground is working with Rhino Insider, the person who makes the software, uh, to create Conveyor V2. Uh, and then later on, you can upgrade from your conveyor, current conveyor that you purchase uh, to Conveyor V2. And then you will be able to convert between Rabbit to Rhino and Rhino to Revit, which is awesome because you get like a whole package. You don't have to download each software and like do one thing, but then in, in the future, Proving Ground will be able to have the whole package uh, for you to use, which is amazing. It's gonna be a game changer. So I'm really excited. Um, so I hope you learn a lot and uh, be able to promote this in your future practice. Thank you.